my name is Joe Nellis. I'm Professor of Global Economy at the Cranfield School of Management, but I'm also Economic Advisor to MHA. There was indeed a black hole of rumoured to be £22 billion. I think today's budget is going to more than fill that black hole, because what we've seen is one of the biggest increases in the tax burden uh, for many, many years. So I have no doubt the black hole will be filled, uh, perhaps sooner than expected. I think perhaps in the short term, the increase in the tax burden that was announced will have little effect on growth. But I think perhaps next year, it will have a slight negative impact on the growth that was expected. Now, let me qualify that. The economy is back onto a growth path. But we had hoped that next year, growth would be perhaps more than 2%. I think it's going to be at most 2% next year because that tax burden is going to hold back corporate investment to some extent. The Chancellor has indeed rewritten the rules on borrowing. Uh, she has coined a new phrase called public sector net financial liabilities. But let me explain that. What it means in essence is that the government will not borrow to fund current expenditure, uh, but they will borrow to fund investment expenditure. And I find this to be a very sensible decision. If I went to a bank to borrow money to fund my day-to-day -day expenditure, that would not be a sustainable situation. But if I were to borrow funds to, let's say, buy a property, that would be regarded as a good form of borrowing. So I think what she's done is actually very sensible indeed. If there's one thing missing, it would be perhaps a greater stimulus to the corporate sector. Uh, we desperately need more investment in this country. I, I agree with the Chancellor, uh, but she has heavily geared this towards public sector investment. What I'd like to have seen would be perhaps a cut in corporate tax. That would have been very, very helpful to stimulate corporate investment, but of course, I didn't expect it. There is no doubt that the biggest winner from this budget is the public sector in general, and in particular the NHS, because there is a huge increase in expenditure going into the NHS. In terms of the biggest loser, I would have to say, well, first of all, the corporate sector, since they'll be funding uh, the largest part of the tax increase, but in particular the SMEs within the corporate sector. Uh, to a large extent, this is a tax on jobs. And I'm concerned, therefore, that the small and medium-sized enterprises who account for most jobs in the country will feel most of the burden. There were a number of surprises uh, in the budget. In particular, I was pleasantly surprised that capital gains tax didn't go up even further. So that's good news. At the same time, uh, fuel duty has been frozen for another year. Again, motors across the country will be very happy with this. Uh, beer duty has been reduced by one pence a pint. Uh, again, a surprise. I didn't expect it. And also, I'm particularly surprised that uh, the Chancellor decided to unfreeze the, the tax thresholds. We had speculated that she may actually extend the freeze on thresholds for another two years, but she did not do that. Indeed, she's going to allow tax thresholds to rise in line with inflation eventually. In terms of one last surprise, I am surprised at the scale of the increase in the tax burden on the corporate sector. Uh, we need a healthy, vibrant corporate sector in this country, and I'm sure many businesses tonight will be concerned at the scale of this tax increase that they now face. So that's all from me this year uh, regarding the budget. This really was a budget about winners and losers. Winners in the public sector, losers perhaps in the corporate sector. But you know, I'm always an optimist. I'm hoping that the corporate sector will adapt and adjust to these changes as quick as possible. Uh, but we look forward to another year uh, and the next budget from this Chancellor.